As Nigeria is getting ready for the 2023 presidential elections, former president Goodluck Jonathan says he's undecided and rejects the All Progressive Congress presidential form bought for him by a northern group. And a court has set aside judgment voiding section 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act of 2022. And President Buhari has ordered ministers running for the office or any office to resign. This is Plus Politics, and I'm Mary Anako. Former President Goodluck Jonathan has rejected a presidential nomination form bought for him by a northern group in Nigeria. Jonathan described the purchase of the form without his consent as an insult. In a statement by his spokesman, Ikechuku Eze, Jonathan also said that he has yet to decide whether to seek the re-election on the platform of Nigeria's current ruling or progressive congress. His spokesperson, Mr. Eze, however, said in a statement that the former president was not consulted before the form was bought. Joining us to discuss this is Opanabo Inko, Tara political analyst, and Ezekiel Nyaitok, he's also a political analyst and a politician. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Thanks Thank for having us. Great. And uh, good evening, Nigeria. I'll start with you, Opanabo. Um, president Goodluck Jonathan has. Um, Oh, for, for the past few months, there have been speculations as to where his political leanings lie, whether he's loyal to the All Progressive Congress. And there are all the, also those who are wondering when the president or the former president had left the People's Democratic Party to join the APC. These are questions and speculations that led to people saying that he might be running for the office of the presidency. We saw videos, we saw pictures that somewhat were pointing in that direction, even though most of them were not factual. But we are here today having this conversation. Uh, and I think my first question is, when did the president move to the APC? Was that a question? Yes, I'm asking, when did President Goodluck Jonathan move to the APC? You mean when or why? Sorry. When? When? Well, I'm not aware of this fact. I'm not aware that uh, Goodluck Jonathan has defected to the APC. All we get is uh, in the realm of... Uh, speculation. And the president himself has not come out to say he has defected to the APC. And I listened to what the uh, chairman of the APC, Bayer said. He said the president's name is not even in direct register. Because if you have to defect, of course, it starts from your word. Although a lot of de uh, defectors rush to Asura just to ingratiate themselves with Mr. President and uh, make a show of their defection, like what panic has they did which is actually in Congress, it's wrong. Because if you have to register from your one level, your polling unit. So the chairman of um, APC Bahasa State said the president is not yet their member. That was what he said. So I don't, and the president himself has not come up to say he has defected, not even his media aid has said so, has alluded to that fact. So I, for now, I don't think that the president or the former president would have been a as defected to the APC. I don't think so. I feel that. If a man of that status should defect from one political party to the other, of course, it, the news will suffuse the air with such a story. The air will, sorry, the air will suffuse with such a story. So I sincerely don't think he has defected. Maybe he's still mulling the idea, maybe he's still commutating upon it, depending on the accommodation he is going to reach with Mr. President. That's what I'm talking of uh, Buhari right now. Depending on the kind of uh, accommodation, the kind of compact so we are going to have, probably. And I think uh, they rushed to buy the form for him in order to beat the deadline. Should they eventually, uh, him, should they eventually submit to the cloud uh, call, the clamor for him to contest? Mm -hmm. Let it not be that uh, the, the, the form will be an impediment. So I think that will guide the rush to get the form. They have also apologized. Mm. I think he met with them between 12 and 1. I don't know how uh, authentic that story is last night. Expressed his uh, anger and they also apologized. So right now, I cannot authoritatively say if President Rudolph Jonathan is a member of the APC 
as the president of the APC or remains a member of the PDP. Mr. Yaitok, um, we've seen this trend of buying forms for certain persons. I mean, the most interesting uh, is the one that um, was bought for the president of the AFDB. Uh, and and, and the, 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 the story of the fact that he's been, they've been trying to contact him and they've not been able to get in touch with him. Um, why do you think that there's all of a sudden um, that special urge to buy people forms, whether or not these people are interested in running for that office? And why is it just people within the All Progressive Congress um, that are buying forms for people who are either members or non-members of the party? The, the very first thing is that I think we, um, we Nigerians need to sit down and really think about ourselves again. There's, there are certain things that people do to you and you have to sit down and ask yourself certain questions because there's a way you present yourself and they talk to you anyhow. There's, 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 um, there's, there's a way you are in an office, even as a lady, and people treat you with respect because your carriage is such that people know without even your saying a thing talking about body language, that you are a no-nonsense person. Nigerians, especially those of us that call ourselves professionals, that call ourselves the elite, that call ourselves the intellectuals, we really need to wonder why we are being treated the way that we are being treated by politicians. What am I saying in all these things? They are certain body language that have come to characterize, you know, the, the political um, uh, mien of, of the politicians. Uh, one of that is, you know, my people want me to. I, I, you know, it's a popular opinion. It means we really don't understand the fundamentals of leadership. Leadership in certain offices, like the office of the president or office of the governor, or office of the local government chairman, we should be, but unfortunately is not. There are offices of maximum service that have to come from a certain level of, um, of, of passion that you have, a certain level of, of, of something that drives you. When, when uh, people are those pushing you to do something, it calls to question if that is the way our politics should be. But could that also not be that the people have seen something in you? I'm sorry to talk over you. Does that not also mean that maybe the people have seen something in you or seen that you have done great in certain other areas? For example, um, the <coughs> AFDB um, um, president. Um, you know, some people may have seen that, look, this man has done great in all of the offices that he's held and we think that he would do great as a president. I'm not in any way campaigning, but I'm saying to you could that also be the reason why people are pushing maybe you're tinkering on it um, and then there are I'll people who are saying let's help you uh, push I'll you to that you level I'll, te I'll tell you this i'll tell you this if you are a man of principles nobody will go behind you to put certain responsibilities on you what they will do is come to you and then you will reason with them. And when you are convinced that you want to do this, you do it because you want to do Apologies, uh, Mr. Nyaito, are you still there? Absolute. Sorry? Go ahead. Did I? We lost you for yes. a second. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. When it comes to my people, Secondly, we know that these forms are paid for by the people behind. Mm -hmm. But they want to show that they are very popular. They want to show that they are wanted by their people. Now, look at the forms that most of these governors and the rest are saying, oh, they bought for me. I want you to do a profiling of the people that bought these forms. And let us see those who contributed to get it done. At the end of the day, is the money of the, you know, you, it's just for me, it's just the way that, that we play this game that doesn't make sense. Let's go to the people that bought the form for President Jonathan. 
Let's go to interrogate the people that bought the form. Let's look at the bank accounts of these people. You just realize that maybe one man somewhere wants to make a point. Either Mr. President's person wants to test the waters or somebody else who should have respect enough to ask Mr. President, sir, we want to do this for you. So what do we do? So head or tail, there's something that is just not ethical about all these issues of they bought the form for me. Doesn't yeah. make sense. I don't buy it. I will come back to you to talk about some other things uh, that some other speculations about why President, former President Goodluck Jonathan is even, you know, in this conversation. But let me come back to you, Oponabo. Um, the former vice, uh, the former president was uh, seen at, on Monday night at the home of um, the uh, national president of the All Progressive Congress. There were pictures that were published on, I think, Monday night when um, he paid that visit to. Uh, reportedly visited Adamu's residence. Um, two two politicians were the two politicians were actually um, photographed beaming with smiles to the camera. The visit uh, actually lasted just a few hours. Um, after the Mieti Ala cattle wearers, a full Negro bought that nomination form, an expression of interest form for a hundred million naira. Even though um, former President Goodluck Jonathan's office issued a statement denying that he has joined the party, but the questions still linger. What was he doing at the House of the National Chairman, or the National, yes, National Chairman of the APC, as a member of the People's Democratic Party? Does that not count as uh, anti-party? Well, um, first and foremost, I don't know why you refer to it as anti-party without the uh, basis of the facts of that discussion. That if a member of the PDP does not mean he cannot visit uh, any member of the APC. His friends will cut across the board. Nevertheless, it became an issue because of the rumor that is uh, rending the air right now. That's why that visit is now an issue. And like I said earlier, you know, Jonathan de la Torres, his procrastination, uh, whether he was going to contest or not, also gave room for all these uh, conjectures and speculations. Probably he went there for the chairman's invitation, maybe to also convince him to the contest, or probably he was there in order to uh, cross the T's and dot the I's and uh, be reassured that should he confess to this to his heart in the wind, that is definitely going to emerge as a consensus candidate. Well, we'll all be guessing because we don't have the facts of the meeting, what should be transferred uh, at that meeting. So I, I think it, it's not unconnected with uh, the purchase of the form and the, the presidential ambition. I think it's not unconnected. I, I have a strong conviction that it has a nexus with it. Uh, but whether it, it is anti-party or not, you can only accuse him of, the, of uh, anti-party activities when you have the facts that he's gone there to betray the PDP. But when you say anti-party, again, if a man is defected from a political party to another political party, and that same person is negotiating his defection, I don't think that is anti-party, no. That's not anti-party. Anti-party could be like somebody that is a mole in a party. For example, we are discussing on how we are going to win party A, and the man takes that uh, discussion out to party A for disclosure. Hmm. Then you can say anti-party. But if Jonathan is moving, even if he's eventually going to defect from the PDP to the APC, and is negotiating, confabulation is going on, you cannot accuse him of anti-party because he has not gone there to sell the PDP to, 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 to APC, not at all. So I don't think he can be accused of anti-party. So why do you think that the, 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 the because I wanted to ask Mr. Nye, I took that question, but I'll start with you. Why do you think that President Jonathan, whether he's, we're not in his mind, we can't tell, we're not in his inner, you know, we, we would love to be a fly on the wall, by the way, to hear what's going on in his home. But why all of a sudden has he become a subject in this 2023 presidential race? Why is he in the conversation? Because the speculations belt up to now saying, oh, he might be, 
you know, running on the platform of the APC. But then there have also been those who have kicked against the idea of President, former President Goodluck Jonathan running for the office of the president. Uh, maybe I do not know what side of the divide that you, um, you know, agree with, whether you think it's a good idea for him to be running, being that the South is saying it's our turn, whether it's the Southeast, whether it's the South-South or, you know, the Southwest, the South is saying it's our turn. Why do you think that he would even want to consider running? But for those who are saying he shouldn't, do you think that they're right? And what would be their reasons, if there be any? Well, first and foremost, it is within the bias, within the, his right, constitutionally, to run. I don't think there is any legal interdiction that will stop him from running. Definitely. Uh, we've had issues with Donald Trump, in the, Donald Trump in the United States is contemplating, uh, contesting again in the next general election. Uh, Buhari, who is our president now, contest how many times have failed. Uh, I think as if he tried it, lost in his world, and I think that was the end. And Abbasinger uh, tried it as well and won. So I don't see anything wrong with President Goodluck Jonathan recontesting. Although a lot of people are saying it's going to diminish his personality and so on, and uh, uh, the, considering his international clout, especially after he conceded to President Buhari, that placed him on a different pedestal. And, uh, it, it, it endeared a lot of people to him. But then, why some persons are saying you should not contest is because, take for example the APP. If Jonathan is going to defect to the APP, then I can tell you that certain agreements have been reached. We will not want to go there and embarrass himself uh, at, the, at, the, at, at the venue of uh, the primary. I don't think we will want to do that. And I think you want to save that up, and that's why probably the negotiations are still going on. Now, I haven't said that if it also comes out, I can assure you that he's going to be one of the strongest candidates, if not the strongest candidate in the election. Because the North, majority of them want to vote for Jonathan, not because they love Jonathan, but simply because they believe that Jonathan is just going to be in office for just another four years. And it will be said that. Uh, the power shifted to the south and it has to go back to the north. Then the evil well, are definitely not going to be happy because they believe that right now it should be going to the southeast. And with the Jonathan from the south south, definitely it is going to truncate or it's going to definitely uh, um, be an impediment to a southeastern, a southeastern as they met as a presidential candidate and eventually a president. So the south is definitely will not be too happy with it. Then there are those with some liberal minds, you know, that would just believe that uh, this man has uh, earned his respect and he doesn't need to uh, uh, rubbish his reputation. Should he lose, what, what, what becomes of his reputation? But I don't believe in that. That to me is a difficult theory. I mean, nothing tries, nothing gains. Nothing ventures, nothing gains. I think Jonathan needs to go in there. Now a lot of them do. Uh, I can remember the Bausu State Governor saying if Jonathan will contest, that he's definitely going to support him and he's also not going to contest. Uh, of State Governor said the same thing. And a lot of other persons, even those that were against Jonathan in 2015, now have their regrets because of the cataclysmic leadership that we are experiencing today in the country under uh, General Muhammad Ibu At this okay. point, permitted to refer to him as a general. He said he's a general and a general for life. Under General Muhammad Ibu And they compared, they just support that they realized that. The Jonathan administration and that of uh, Muhammad Obuare is like seven of the different clans. So for so many reasons, you know, people are even suffering from contest. Those that are saying they should not contest, should not contest most of them are for egocentric reasons, you know, because his ambition will definitely negatively impact on their ambition. And so they don't want him to contest because of the clout he has. So mm. that's exactly But Whatever it is, everybody's entitled to his opinion. That's not the truth about it. Mr. Ngai, took it. My first question is, why is why not contest on the platform of the People's Democratic Party, a platform that okay. he wrote... No, no, my well, qu the well, question well, is... I'm sorry, it's for, it's for Mr. Ngaitok. Why is President okay, Jonathan, okay. if he were to contest, if he were interested, if he is to be part of this, why not the PDP? Secondly, how important is a good luck Jonathan ticket in 2023? And would really he be able to win the South-South in 2023? Okay. 
I, I, I'll look at it from a slightly different perspective. My first perspective will be the country Nigeria, the politics, the governance. There's so much of the politics, but politics takes a nation nowhere. Governance decides whether we are going to be the poverty capital of the world or a fast growing economy. We must draw a line between those two, politics and governance. In politics, which is the game of power, the South will be very unhappy with President Jonathan. He was president for eight years, and he was the president of Nigeria. He was pan-Nigerian. So if he comes back as president, he's going to be what favors the North because he's going to be a president for everybody. Now he's going to be there for four years and the South would have taken their turn. Then it goes to the North. Will we have a Northern president who is going to be a pan-Nigerian like Jonathan? Or would we have had eight years of the North, four years of north-south and another eight years of the north again it is on account of that that the south is saying this man we thank you and everything for the politics please wait let's get a southern president who is going to be eight years from the south before it goes back to the north now that is the politics. So the North will be happy with the politics. The South will be unhappy with the politics. Let's come to the governance. In the Nigeria of today, Jonathan, my former president, Jonathan, has the good heart, which is good for leadership. He does not have the charisma, which is what is needed today. He does not have that thing, that, that kind of that, that brings people, motivates people, gets people up, and then gets them doing, gets them going. He doesn't have that. And we can't have, after eight years of President Buhari, we can't have another four years of a non-charismatic, non-visionary leader. He is visionary within a certain context of a nice guy. But we may need to have a man who is a brute of some sort because the global market right now needs somebody who is relatively bullish. And that man can be found in a man like President Buhari, uh, uh, President Obasanjo. Some days back, I was with President Obasanjo and I said, Damn, my Oga, you know, is my boss. I said, Sir, let me leak a secret I've never told you. It's true that I became the first Nigerian that got the shelter of free facility for any state government. That is what people know. There's a back end to that story, which is what people don't know, what helped me. Shelter Africa knew that Nigeria was one of the largest investors and one of the longest and most supportive. And that no Nigerian, no state had benefited from the facility. They said, if something is not done, this man, is going to withdraw from Shelter Africa because President Obasanjo takes no prisoners. Where Nigeria is not getting value, value for money, he's going to leave. So they were desperate to get a facility to Nigeria. So I entered and became a beneficiary of the man's, you know, bullishness and fear by the international community. Yeah. For today, we need such a person. And I don't think that President former president, um, um, uh, Bella Jonathan, has it. Number two, we need somebody who is tech savvy, somebody who understands the trends, and he does not show me in the past eight years he was president that he really did that. Maybe over the years he has learned it, but that is taking a chance again. And finally, we have lacked international role models and figures. And after Nelson Mandela, I dare say that President Goodluck Jonathan is one African that is respected globally today. 
what is it coming for for another four years mm. okay Cans of people rubbish so please let him be where we are let us have that that big figure nationally and internationally and okay. let us get a more vibrant person as a president okay well interesting finally uh open up uh, the the ABC is closing its sale of forms as we speak. Um, a lot, we've seen a lot more people rush to, you know, buy and submit their forms um, as the time is running out. And we don't see, um, you know, any green light coming from um, the area of President, former President Goodluck Jonathan. So now let's look at all that remains of those who are running for office. I mean, the president has today said all of these people need to... Uh, if you have declared to run for any office and you hold a public office, then you need to resign and go pursue your, um, you know, political ambitions. But what remains to be seen within the APC as they gear up for their primaries in closing? Sorry, I didn't get your question. I'm asking, now that the sale of forms is coming to a close, we haven't heard anything from President Goodluck Jonathan. It means that the party is left with all those who have submitted their forms so far. What remains to be seen as the party gears up for their primaries come, to, come um, the end of May? Well, uh, the president has ordered, he who hires fires, the president has ordered that all those that are interested in political office, elect, elect, elective office, to resign, I think by latest Monday or thereabouts. And uh, they're all going to resign, not because they are legally bound to resign, because the Constitution says 30 days. If you remember on this very program, even the electoral act I told you will be voided because it's it, it to a very large extent inconsistent with the provisions of the Constitution. They also have amended the Constitution first before amending the electoral act. That is what they would have done. Remember, and I told that this took a couple of people to buy that it. Although it differed a little on, on technicality, but it's still buy that it, you know, it's an infringement on the rights of, uh, of, of Nigeria. Having said this, what do you expect? Of course, the political hustling has started. What the politicians will do once they leave office right now, or once they resign, what they will do is to wreck of the political engine. It's as simple as that. Uh, a lot of them were not going to be happy with it because when you consider the effects of the office, uh, which, which they will be robbed of once they leave, the, the security probably between now, those who thought it was going to be for the 30 days to the election, between now the 30 days are going to make more money, sign more contracts and so on. Mm. Uh, that's where well, a lot of them that think that we will definitely not be happy with it. But well, in life, you, you can't have all you want. So, They'll just come and join the political play actively now and not just passively. Most of them will even relocate to their various states, those that mm. are not in Abuja, to ensure that their party goes away the governorship elections in those states. Mm. Uh, so it's going to be an, an interesting, uh, actually, it's going to be an interesting period. Yes. Quite interesting, I can tell you that. Okay. Well, I want to say uh, thank you very much, Upanabal Inko Taria, Ezekiel Nyaitok, Bolsa, mm. political analyst. Thank you for being part of the conversation. We appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a quick break. And when we return, we will discuss the appeal court setting aside a judgment voting, or rather voiding, section 84, subsection 12 of the Electoral Act of 2022. And, of course, President Buhari ordering uh, during the Federal Executive Council uh, that members of the council with political ambitions must resign on or before Monday next week. We'll be right back.